Hello everyone, my name is Juan Landano. Welcome back to another video. Today the topic is understanding lenses. So let's get started. So there are many things in life that can be misunderstood or not understood. For example, you know, every once in a while I might say that I don't understand women because my wife is difficult for me to understand. And she says the same thing about me. She doesn't understand men, right? Uh, both of us don't understand children. And the children don't, don't understand the adults. So these are really complicated things to not understand. They're going to require a little more uh, study, reading, analysis, time. Uh, these are complicated, right? Fortunately for us, lenses doesn't fall into this category. We can actually read something. We can practice. We can watch some YouTube videos and understand lenses. So let's continue with this topic and see what we can figure out today. To start with, not understanding lenses many times leads to buku bucks. And what I mean by that is people um, will go out and check, you know, the internet, they have a, a few bucks laying around and they need a new lens or would like a new lens, uh, but they're not sure what to get, right? So they read a couple of reviews, the review, uh, the lens has great reviews, right? So they go ahead and buy it. It's, you know, 1500, they've heard about it. A friend may have one. And they go ahead and take the plunge and then they realize they're not using it as much because it's not the lens they really need it right so this is why this topic is so important right hopefully it'll save us some money it'll give us a further understanding and you'll never wonder when you look at all those numbers on the lens and features and things what they mean right so this is the video that's going to clear this all out for us so for starters let's start with something as simple as manual versus autofocus right I have a lens right here. It's a Canon 100 millimeter macro and it's got a little button here, manual and autofocus. I don't know if you can see that, right? But most lenses now um, have that. The older lenses uh, didn't always. Um, and really the way it worked um, in the days of film, like that didn't exist. They, they were all manual focus. You had to move the lens, you know, uh, and get it sharply in focus, right? Um, now you press the button on the camera, the lens focuses automatically. So um, that's a cool feature, right? Many times if you're shooting things like if you're in the middle of a bunch of uh, flowers, for example, and there's a hundred flowers in front of you and you're trying to get that one flower that has the bee, well, you may have to put it in manual focus because sometimes the camera gets confused, right? You push that button down, it doesn't know which flower to focus, right? Even if you have it on spot focusing, it's not really sure what to do at that point, right? Especially if the flowers are close together. So uh, manual versus autofocus. Most people keep it in autofocus, you know, especially if you're doing events like weddings and sports, it's just a little easier. One less thing to not worry about, right? The camera focusing. Uh, and you hope at that point that the lens focuses quickly. That's one of the things you may want to look at. Um, manufacturers will give that in terms of um, a spec. You may want to rent a lens. Um, most places in big cities now, there are places that rent lenses and you can rent the lens uh, for like 15, 20 bucks a day. Imagine that. And if you're thinking about buying one, go ahead and rent it. Try it. See if it focuses quickly. I think that's a great idea, right? So the other thing we can talk about is breaking lenses up into types, right? And there's so many different types when we get down to it, right? Uh, people say there are two types of people, angry people, happy people. And then you hear another person say there are two types of people, hardworking and lazy. Well, there's probably a thousand different types of people when you look at all those categories, right? So lenses do the same thing. So let's look at this category, right? Let's look at image stabilized. In Canon, we call it IS. And, and the lens will just say, you know, image stabilization or, or not, right? Some lenses don't have that. Um, this particular lens that I just showed you uh, doesn't have image stabilization. So the way it used to be when lenses were first doing image stabilization, companies that made lenses were very careful about where they put it, right? A lens that is a telephoto lens where you're looking at a bird, right? You know, uh, really far away. That was important to have image stabilization because you're holding that camera and every little movement here is a big movement over there, right? Um, so image stabilization was specifically left to those telephoto lenses, right? Lenses that had a focal uh, length of, you know, 100, 200, whatever, right? Um, and we'll talk about all these numbers and what they mean and, and things like focal length, right? Field of view. Um, so now as we, as we get a little more modern with photography and the times have moved along, you find all kinds of lenses have image stabilization because 
people are using them to record videos, vlogging, right, uh, in lower light sometimes. So image stabilization really helps on the lens. And then if the camera has it too, oh, fantastic. Both of those work together. Um, that's always nice, right? Um, so if your lens has it, fantastic. If it doesn't, it's not the end of the world. You get a tripod, um, you know, and you do the best you can with that, okay? So what is image stabilization? How does it work, right? Typically, um, the lens is going to have in here, right, on the inside, it's gonna have a little gyroscope. It's a little motor that spins very fast. Submarines have them, helicopters have them, many you know, airplanes have them just to keep uh, the vehicle you know, stable, right? That's what it does. So it spins at a really high rate and it stabilizes the movement of your hand if you have any shake, right? Um, and that's a really cool feature. Now, what it does, right, um, is it adds to the lens a little thickness on the outside, right? The, the diameter of the inside where the, where the light goes through and stuff, that's not going to change, right? But the, the diameter of the outside is going to get a little, a, a little wider, right? Because it's got to accommodate these motors, right, and mechanisms. Now, um, the thing to think about here is that's more to break, right? I mean, you know, you have an engine in a car and then you add a turbo because you want to go faster, that's one more thing to break and it's expensive, right? So lenses with image stabilization typically cost a little more and it's one thing that you may have to worry about in the future. Now, typically they don't fail, right? And I have lenses that have had image stabilization, have had, uh, that have image stabilization and I've had them for years, 15 years, <clears throat> and I use them all the time with image stabilization and I've had no issues whatsoever, right? Uh, but you get what you pay for too, right? If you get a really cheap lens, you may have problems with it. If you get a good lens, typically they're going to use better parts, right? So keep that in mind. So the last thing I want to talk about image stabilization is, can it hurt your image? Now, technically speaking, your image doesn't have any feelings, so it's not going to hurt your image. Uh, at least it's not going to hurt your image's feelings, right? It's going to hurt you when you take a crappy picture. But if your pictures have feelings it, or had life, um, and we hope our pictures have life, right? If our pictures have life, it's going to hurt, right? It's going to hurt them. And the reason it hurts the picture is if you, for example, are shooting, um, picture this, it's really, it's really dark, right? It's uh, 10 p.m. in the evening and you're shooting a cityscape, right? And you've got your tripod set up and your camera's focused at the city and you're on a bridge somewhere far away. Beautiful view, right? And you have your image stabilization on. Your camera's on, your camera's on a tripod already. It's not moving. Now you turn on this image stabilization and it's a little motor that introduces bzzz, a little vibration. So you may actually, in that situation, add movement to your camera and your lens, right? Interesting that, you know, that would actually happen. I didn't know that for many years. I would go out, I'd shoot these beautiful cityscapes and my image stabilization was on and my camera was on a tripod. I'm like, I don't need IS, I'm on a tripod, right? So if you're holding the camera by hand and you're moving around, eh, keep it on. Now, if you're shooting in daylight and, you're, and your shutter's opening and closing really fast, you don't need image stabilization. Every time you use image stabilization, it's sucking juice out of your camera's battery because that motor has to spin, so you're going to diminish your battery life. Keep that in mind, okay? So if you don't need it, turn it off. Remember to turn it on when you need it. Now, if you're the type that says, well, I'm just going to keep it on all the time. I have extra batteries. It doesn't hurt me. That's okay in the daytime, but remember, if you put that camera on a tripod and you're shooting at night, the camera's already still, and that little motor bzzz, is gonna introduce movement, okay? So turn it off when you put that camera on a tripod in the evening, right? So another type we hear a lot is, you'll hear people say prime lenses, and you don't hear that too much, but you hear zoom lenses, right? And you can imagine what zoom, you know, you're zooming in and you're zooming out, you kind of know what that means. So what's a prime lens? Well, a prime lens is one that doesn't do that. So a prime lens has a fixed focal length, okay? The focal length is the, the measurement. It's, it's a measurement that doesn't really matter to us. It's the measurement between the, the sensor in your camera that receives the image and, and the part of the lens uh, where, your, where your diaphragm is, okay? That distance is your... Um, your focal length, okay? So that doesn't matter to us. What matters is that we start learning that focal lengths with big numbers, like 100, 200, 300, they're bringing images closer to us. They're making things look bigger. These are the telephoto lenses, okay? Focal lengths um, below 50, 
You know, when you start to get to 50, 35, 24, every time you go lower, you're seeing wider and wider. And 24 and 16 and 11, right? Uh, you're seeing more of, of the field, right? A field of, your field of view is increasing. So uh, those are the things uh, to think about when you hear focal length. What does it mean, focal length? Well, the number itself doesn't matter. Just know that as that number gets bigger, you're, you're getting closer to your subject, right? That line that's really far away that you don't really feel like getting close to, you put a nice telephoto lens in there where the focal length is like 400 millimeters and you make him look like he's playing in your backyard, right? So that's important. And of course, zoom lenses have a variable, right? Um, focal length. So your zoom lens, lens might be like 24 to 70. That's a very popular one, right? So it, it starts out very wide at 24, <clears throat> and then you can go to 35 and 50 and 70, and now you, you zoomed in somewhat and you're a little closer to your subject, which may be important if you know, you're taking it with you, say, on a little family trip and you want to do some portraits, right? You put it on 70, you get closer to people a little bit, and then you can shoot some landscapes at 24 and 35. Nice all-around lens to keep in your bag if you have one. It's fantastic. So speaking of that 24 to 70, here's my 24 to 70, and here's a picture shot at 24 millimeters, right? It's a picture of my truck shot at 24 millimeters, and you see how wide it is, right? If you go to um, 35, this is what the picture looks like on 35. Uh, shot at 35 uh, millimeter focal length, okay? And then you step it up to 50 and you're getting a little closer to that truck, right? Until you go all the way to 70 millimeters, which is the upper end, and that's what it looks like, right? And you can use any number in between, by the way. It doesn't have to be 24, 35, right? It's not a hard stop. It's a smooth transition, so 26, 27, 28, you can, whatever, you know, you're not looking at that number, you're looking at whatever picture you're taking and you're moving your lens and you're changing that, that uh, focal length on a zoom lens until you get exactly what you want in that picture. Looking at the number to see what it is, that's irrelevant, it'll get recorded in your metadata anyway, but, um, but that's what focal length is, and so zoom lenses have a variable focal length, you can move it around, right? And, and prime lenses just have one focal length. If it's a 50 millimeter lens, it's a 50 millimeter lens. If it's 100, it's 100. You don't have to play anything to play with, any bandwidth. If you buy a 70 to 200, that's a zoom lens. And you can zoom from 70, which is a slight telephoto, all the way to 200, which really you're getting close uh, to that subject, okay? So what are the advantages and disadvantages? Let's talk about prime lenses first, right? The um, the advantages of prime lens lenses are that they're typically a little lighter. So this is a prime lens. This is a 100 millimeter prime lens, right? There are glass elements in here. It's not just one big chunk of glass and it's not like uh, just one lens in here at the beginning and one at the end. No, there are many elements in here, right? And you can see pictures of your lenses online. You can look that up. Uh, your manufacturer will show you that, uh, whoever makes the lens, right? So. Prime lenses, because it's a fixed focal length, there isn't a zoom, any zooming going on, uh, they typically have less elements. So they tend to be a little lighter, okay? They tend to be a little less expensive, right? Because there are less elements in here, glass elements, uh, they tend to block less light. You gotta remember, each glass element is gonna knock out a little bit of light. As light's going through it, it blocks it a little bit, right? So you're talking about, you know, you have seven or eight elements that's gonna diminish light. Now, if you have 12 or 13 elements, that's gonna diminish light even further. <clears throat> so what that means is that if you are, if you know for a fact that you're gonna be shooting a lot of, uh, you know, evening pictures or pictures in low light and, you, and you're gonna be shooting by hand and you're gonna be moving your ISO up in the camera, and we'll talk about this later, um, you want a lens, maybe like a prime lens, and you wanna have a couple of different prime lenses, like a 35 and a 16, and a 50, and an 85, and a 100, right? Um, because they're gonna let in the most light, truly, right? Um, so think about that. And the other last thing about prime lenses is that um, because there are less glass elements, right? Uh, optically in here, they tend to be a little sharper because you gotta remember each glass element, as good as they are, and as much as these manufacturers try to make them perfect, they have imperfections, right? So if one has a little bit of an imperfection and then the second one has a little bit of an imperfection and you got six of them in here, you're introducing some imperfection to your picture, right? And if you have 13 of them, wow, that doubles that imperfection level. So uh, keep that in mind. Prime lenses are just tend to be a little cleaner. Um, and of course, lenses are so good now that 
the difference may be not noticeable to the human eye. It used to be, right? Uh, it's not as bad anymore. So the only big disadvantage of prime lenses is that they have a fixed focal length, right? So what does that mean? If you have a 50 millimeter, for example, and you go to New York City to take pictures um, and you see this beautiful cathedral, it doesn't fit in your frame. So what are you going to have to do? You're going to have to cross back, you know, walk across the street so you can fit that nice cathedral in your picture. And now what do you have? You have buses going by, you have taxis going by, you have people walking by, right? So think about these things, right? Um, but it's not the end of the world because if you're really shooting pictures of New York City, that's part of what you want to capture is the movement and the liveliness, right? That that energy that the city has, right? Uh, but if you want that picture of that cathedral alone, you're going to have to get creative, right? Um, so that's the biggest disadvantage. Um, not a big deal, right? Um, I like that because sometimes it shakes you up as a photographer. You put that 50 millimeter lens or 35 millimeter lens on your camera and you go and you say, that's all I'm taking. You better figure it out. It's going to limit you maybe a couple times, but for the most part, you're going to have to walk. You want to get something a little closer up, you're going to have to walk up to it. You want to get further away, you're going to have to walk back. Um, you want a different angle, walk around it, right? You, you start walking more and you start asking yourself, what can I do with this lens? How can I make my photography creative, you know, creative with this lens and, and desirable and make it pop? And, um, and you start doing really cool things. And you do that for about a month and then you leave that lens home and you put a nice flexible zoom lens where you have that flexibility and ah, all of a sudden it opens up your limits and you're, you know, um, so it's much better that way. So the other thing I want to add to the disadvantages of prime lenses is if you are going on that trip, like, you know, to shoot landscapes with a friend for a weekend, you're going camping, right? And you have that 35 millimeter and you have that 50 millimeter and you have that 85 millimeter and you have the 100 millimeter and, uh, and you, you know, you accumulated these nice prime lenses because you shoot in low light. Now you're going on this trip. Yeah, each one is, is lighter than, than a zoom lens because it has less glass elements and it's smaller. Um, but now you have to carry four or five of them. So you have a bag full of lenses. And let me tell you something, that's going to weigh you down, right? So you got to think of that too. The flexibility of a zoom lens uh, is important in those situations where you can just pop one or two lenses in your bag and take off and not think about all that stuff, right? So that's another one I just thought about. So before we continue, let me talk about a special prime lens. It's the 50 millimeter. On a full frame camera, and if, and if you don't um, know what a full frame is as opposed to a crop sensor camera, uh, my first video, and I'll put that in the description below, um, has information on that. That's what it's about, okay? Full frame cameras versus crop sensor cameras. So on a full frame camera, when you put a 50 millimeter lens on, it basically sees what the eye sees, right? So when I look at you standing across from me and your head is a certain size, when I look at the picture shot with a 50 millimeter lens, it's going to be like you were standing in front of me and I shot that with a, a normal lens, right? If I put a telephoto lens in there, your head's going to look bigger. You're going to look closer up. And if I put a wide angle lens, it's going to get all that stuff around you and you're going to look like you're really far away, right? So a 50 millimeter, you don't hear it anymore, but it used to be called a standard prime lens because 50 millimeter is the lens that everybody bought as their first lens. It was a cool lens to have because it's what the eye saw. You walked around a city, you walked around a farm, you walked around the mountains. No matter where you were, the camera was seeing what you were seeing. And that was a cool concept, right? So the 50 millimeter, if you want to learn photography, put a 50, mil 50 millimeter lens on your camera and go for a walk anywhere. And and because it's you're capturing what you're seeing, basically, right? Without going too wide or too narrow. So uh, keep that in mind. 50 millimeter lens is the standard prime lens, okay? So now on zoom lenses, the advantages are basically the opposite of the, you know, of the, of the prime lens, right? The advantages are that flexibility. You want to zoom into something, you don't have to walk, right? You don't have to climb a fence or go under something or go around it. You zoom in and you bring that subject close to you. You want a wider picture, you zoom back and you get a wider picture. Flexibility is wonderful. And normally you can get away with one or two lenses in your bag. The Holy Trinity, we talk, we'll talk about that later and other photographers talk about that all the time. Uh, is basically the three zoom lenses that if you have those three, there's basically, you know, almost nothing that you're not going to be able to capture with those three lenses, right? Unless you're shooting something extreme, right? Like planets or, you know, really wild animals that, 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 that are, you know, you don't want to be anywhere near them. You might want to go to a, you know, uh, I don't know, like a 400 or 800 millimeter range <clears throat> focal lengths, right? But for the most part, 
the flexibility of a of a, a zoom lens is just wonderful and again you know so the disadvantages uh, are the opposite of prime right there are more glass elements in zoom lenses than in prime lenses so that means that you know maybe uh more opportunity for you know for um imperfections in the glass multiplying over many many you know pieces of glass that can give you some problems right um definitely heavier more glass right they tend to cost more because they give you that flexibility and there are more glass elements and they do more um typically um especially if you get into the professional ones right the l series for canon uh, those can get expensive but they're wonderful lenses there are more moving parts because now you don't just focus, you also zoom in and out, right? So those are things that go bad sometimes over time. I had a lens go bad on me once. Uh, it no longer was focusing sharply because when I moved it back and forth to get wider or narrower pictures, right? More telephoto or more wide angle, it would mess up my, my focus, right? Um, so those are things to you know, you know, ponder when you're thinking about lenses. There are lenses that have two rings. One is to focus the lens, like if you're focusing manually, and the other one controls the zooming, right? And then there are lenses that do it all in one dial. One dial will do everything. So, um, you know, that was something uh, that was big in the old days. Now people don't think about that much. Now you just control the zooming and you don't worry about the, you know, the focus. You let the camera and the lens do that, right? And size is no joke. Let me tell you, if you look at a 200, like a 70 to 200 millimeter zoom lens, that is a big freaking lens and it weighs. Not only is it going to weigh in your bag, it's going to weigh when you put it on the camera. And you, if you're walking around with this thing, which I have, if you shoot weddings, you, you're going to hold it for half the day. Um, holy cow, that is a big lens. But it is a beautiful lens, like a 70 to 200. It gives you a lot of flexibility. If you're shooting portraits, oh my gosh, you can, you can, you know, get half body, you can get full body, or you can get, you know, just the, the head just by moving in and out with the lens. Give people privacy because you can stand far away from them. Some models uh, and subjects don't like the photographer getting close to them. They get they feel a little anxious. So you get far away. You put that thing in 150, 200. Oh, my God. These are beautiful lenses, right? Um, but they're big and they're heavy, right? The good thing is two of them in your bag is all you need. You don't have to carry four or five lenses. So everything has an advantage and a disadvantage. Keep that in mind, okay? And the only thing I forgot is just keep in mind because there are more glass elements that what I talked about earlier, uh, maybe the picture not being as, as sharp, you know, uh, there are more things to handle in a, in a zoom lens, right? Focus becomes a little more complicated. So uh, over time, they get a little softer than prime lenses. Softer means they don't focus as sharply. Okay. So that's another thing. So with that, we come to the conclusion and, and pretty much the end of this topic for now, there's going to be a second video because we only believe it or not addressed half of the things that we like to talk about when we talk about lenses, right? And, and I get these questions a lot from students that, you know, take photography classes with me and just people I know because they know that I understand photography and that I like photography. So they'll call me, uh, you know, in the evening, people from work, and they'll say, hey, I got a question, man. I want to buy a lens. Can you help me out? And I noticed that, you know, Many times I thought these people knew photography because I'd see their camera and their camera was actually pretty decent, like a thousand dollar camera, fifteen hundred dollar camera, body alone, right? So when they call me and they were like, hey, I just want to run something by you. I want to figure out if I'm, you know, buying the right lens. Um, I'm thinking of getting this one. And you start asking them questions. What do you do normally? How, you know, what do you shoot? Uh, what kind of light do you like shooting in? That kind of thing, just to get a feel. And you realize, mm -mm -mm, nope. You're not looking at the right lens, right? Um, and then when I ask, like, do you know? Because I start talking. Well, you want your focal length to be in this range, right? And uh, and think of your f-stop too, right? Your aperture needs to be in, in this category. And and I'd see that look like that was it. The conversation was over. <laughs> so I nicely would say, those numbers don't mean a lot to you, do they? I'm like, nah, not really. So I'm like, okay. And, and they would be honest. Like, well, I understand, you know, aperture like I want the lens to let a lot of light in but that's I, I don't know much about anything else and and I'd say okay um, let me explain some basic things to you and I'd write it on a piece of paper for 20 minutes explain aperture and a few things and and that would you know uh, really uh, make them realize what what they needed and and that they were looking at the wrong lens right um, so that's what we talked about saving money if you don't understand lenses you end up blowing a lot of money that you didn't need to spend right so um, this is why this topic came out. Now we've covered half the topics. I'll cover the other half of the topics in video number two, understanding lenses. Um, so 
give me a week and that'll be the next video I put out. Um, if this was useful, if uh, it gave you a little bit of insight and hopefully helps you a little understand lenses and what they're about, um, please like, hit the little thumbs up. If you were offended by this video and you hate me and you hate the topic, hit that, you know, that little downward thumb, hit it twice just to show how angry you are. <laughs> and uh, subscribe, please, that means a lot. I'll keep dropping really cool content on here um, and we'll keep this going as long as we can, right? Uh, as long as our health is good and anything, you know, life permits. So see you guys around, um, stay tuned, take care of yourselves, uh, stay safe, keep your immune system uh, strong and we'll chat in the next one. Ciao for now.